Yo, what's going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have another mock draft, 12 team PPR mock draft on sleeper.app. I will leave a link in the in the description below if you'd like to check them out. We are drafting from the 6th overall pick. Yesterday I did the 5th overall pick and I forgot to say happy July 4th to those of you guys who are in the United States of America, which is probably about 80 to 90% of you guys so happy belated 4th of July and like I said yesterday was the 5th overall pick and right now I think that the 5th overall pick currently in early July is the best place to draft because I think that Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Zeke and Kamara are even though I do have Christian McCaffrey obviously in a tier higher I do think that Kamara and Zeke are both very, very good and much higher than the rest of the guys available later in the first round. And even though I don't want Michael Thomas with an early first round pick, I pretty much always can get either Zeke or Kamara with the fifth overall pick because Thomas usually goes third or fourth. But with the sixth overall pick, usually McCaffrey, Barkley, Zeke, and Kamara both go. I won't say usually. There's about a 50% chance that one of them is there and 50% chance that none of, none of them are there. So we'll see what happens in this draft. But yeah, I do think that the fifth overall pick is the best place to draft from because you're almost guaranteed either Zeke or Kamara. So with that being said, let's get right into the draft. All right, so Christian McCaffrey first, Barkley second, Cook third, Thomas fourth, and Zeke fifth. So I will say a lot of times Dalvin Cook does go earlier. So that is usually when the 50% chance of either Zeke or Kamara being available happens when Dalvin Cook goes before either Zeke or Kamara because a lot of people aren't too concerned about his holdout. Personally, I am pretty concerned about that, especially when you add in the fact that he has an extensive injury history. So I'm not taking Dalvin Cook before Christian McCaffrey, Saquon, Zeke, Kamara, even Henry, and possibly Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders, but they're very, very close. But looking at the guys available, Kamara and Henry and Adams, but I'm not taking Adams. I'm not going to take a receiver here. I'm not going to take Derrick Henry. It's full PPR. He doesn't have a ton of receiving upside. Kamara is the play here. I've been getting Kamara in a lot of these drafts, you guys. If you've seen my recent drafts, you know I've been getting him a lot. But yeah, a lot of receiving upside. He should definitely have some positive touchdown regression. So we are going to go with Alvin Kamara. He is definitely the best player available, and I don't think there's much of a debate for that. So now Derrick Henry goes off the board, followed by Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, Miles Sanders, Julio Jones, Nick Chubb, DeAndre Hopkins, Aaron Jones, Kenyon Drake, Joe Mixon, Tyreek Hill. Lamar Jackson goes a little early and ahead of Patrick Mahomes which I don't really like at all because Mahomes has proven himself for the last two years, but Lamar Jackson hasn't quite done that. Looking at the players who we can draft here, we have Eckler, Godwin, and CEH. It's between those, really, but I wouldn't take CEH ahead of Eckler. So really, it's between Eckler and Godwin. So let's look at the running backs. Basically, I, there are a lot of third-round running backs who I like. There's actually really only a few, but I can almost always get them. That's Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson. So I don't need Eckler, but I would like it if I could get him. Then for wide receiver, in the third round, there's guys like Thielen and Juju who are pretty good, but I think that the fourth round wide receivers are perfectly fine too. If we were to take Godwin here, then we would definitely take one of... Carson or Bell in the next round and then we may take another running back like Montgomery in the fourth round or we could go with someone like Cooper Cup or Calvin Ridley but what I want to do is we already did a full wide receiver zero draft strategy in one of these mock drafts but I want to do another one with not quite wide receiver zero but pretty close to wide receiver zero. So I think we're going to go with three running backs probably. So we're going to start with Kamara, obviously. Then we're going to go Eckler here. He has a lot of upside for sure. And 
I actually just got into a little conversation on Twitter about Austin Eckler. If you don't follow me on Twitter, definitely go follow me there because I put out a lot of daily content over there. So I'll put the tweet up on the screen. I basically, I really like Austin Eckler. I don't think that he is really going to be affected a ton by either Herbert or Tyrod Taylor. Obviously, I don't think he's going to do as good as he did last season, but the absence of Melvin Gordon is going to help him a lot. So we're going to take Austin Eckler with this pick here. Then Gurley goes off the board, followed by Godwin, CEH, Travis Kelsey, Mahomes, Kenny Galladay, David Johnson, George Kittle, Melvin Gordon, and James Conner. I don't like David Johnson, Melvin Gordon, or James Conner, or Leonard Fournette, for that matter, ahead of guys like Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson. Now, I have been getting a lot of Chris Carson and virtually none of Le'Veon Bell, and that's usually because either none of them are available, because either I wait until the fourth round hoping that one of them falls, but they never do, so neither of them are there at that point, but when I'm in the third round, they're usually both there, and I like Carson more than Bell, so you could go either way here, but I just prefer Carson because we know he is a very good fit for the offense that he's in. Le'Veon Bell, not so much. He is on an Adam Gase team, and we all know Adam Gase is not great. Chris Carson just has to stay on the field. Like I mentioned in my last video, as long as he is playing on the field, he should be golden. As long as he's healthy and not off the field because he fumbled twice in a game, I think he should be absolutely great. So we're going to go with Chris Carson here. But if you want to take Le'Veon Bell or even Fournette, I guess, I couldn't really fault you for that. But Leonard Fournette, you're getting kind of risky to take him over Chris Carson. But Le'Veon Bell, I think you can take him ahead of Chris Carson if you want to, for sure. Then Thielen goes, followed by Fournette, Le'Veon Bell, Amari Cooper, Mike Evans, Allen Robinson, OBJ, Juju, Cooper Cup, Jonathan Taylor, DJ Moore, and Calvin Ridley both go back-to-back -back right before my pick. I swear, guys, this always happens. Like, if you've watched my recent mock drafts, this is pretty much what always happens. We have Juju, Cooper Cup, DJ Moore, and Calvin Ridley all almost in a row go right next to each other. Those were four of the last five picks, and I love all of those guys. So that is very, very unfortunate. We do have Robert Woods. We have A.J. Brown. I would definitely take Robert Woods here, but I don't see Mark Andrews being taken yet. So we could go with Mark Andrews here. The issue is the wide receivers. Who are we going to get? I already did a wide receiver zero strategy, so I may actually, if this were a real draft, I may go with Mark Andrews here, but we already did a wide receiver zero mock draft strategy, so we're not going to do that now. We're just going to do a almost wide receiver zero mock draft and go with a wide receiver here. So we started the first three rounds with three running backs. In the fourth round, we're going to pick up wide receiver. So it's between A.J. Brown and Robert Woods. I know a lot of people love A.J. Brown. I'm honestly in the middle. I don't love him, don't hate him, which is very rare. I find that most people either love him or hate him. I think that he's fine. But when I'm going wide receiver zero, I don't really want my top receiver being super, super risky, especially because I am targeting uh, Terry McLaurin with my next pick, and he is on the riskier side, so I'm going to go with the safe play in Robert Woods this round. He's very safe. He finished the year extremely strong last season, and he has been consistently a wide receiver too, and there's no reason why that should change with so many more opportunities this season than last season with not only Gurley, but also with Brandon Cooks gone. So Devin Singletary goes, followed by Mark Andrews, Raheem Mostert, Dave Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, Zach Ertz, DK Metcalf, AJ Brown falls pretty far, Cam Akers, and Tyler Lockett. So I'm going to take one quick look at running back. So I see guys like Mark Ingram, Geis, Dobbins, who I like. There is a chance that one of them falls to me at my next pick, so I don't really have to take one of them right here looking at wide receiver all these guys are pretty good but mclaurin is definitely my favorite of this entire group and i doubt that he would fall to me with my next pick so i'm not really expecting for dobbins or geis or someone like that to fall to me with my next pick but 
if one of them does fall, I think that would be great and I'd be very happy, but I'm not quite going to rely on it. So we are going to take McLaurin here. His ADP is the late fifth round. It's like a borderline sixth round pick. So yeah, we're reaching a half a round, but it's because I know I can't get him with my next pick and reaching a half a round in the middle rounds like this isn't the end of the world. At this point, take who you want as long as you're not reaching a round and a half or two rounds. And I'm only reaching for Terry McLaurin by about half a round. So it's okay. Then Darren Waller goes, followed by Mark Ingram, Keenan Allen, DJ Chark, T.Y. Hilton, Dak Prescott, Damian Williams, Cortland Sutton, Kyler Murray, Stephon Diggs, Russell Wilson, DeAndre Swift. And it is now our pick. Quick look at tight end, Gronk, Ingram, nope, don't like either of them. Both of them are injury prone and... Evan Ingram, a lot of there's actually a decent amount of competition in New York, and overall just way too injury prone. And Gronk, he's been retired for a year and he's super injury prone. No need to take one of them this early, and I am extremely excited to see that Darius Geis is available. Now, speaking of injury prone players, yes, Darius Geis has gotten injured quite a bit, but what I will say is he tore his ACL his rookie season, and studies do show that you are much more likely to injure almost any body part below the waist the season following your ACL injury rather than two seasons after your ACL injury. And studies show that two seasons after your torn ACL injury, you are almost like pre-injury form. Look at Dalvin Cook. He tore his ACL his rookie year, then his sophomore season, he was pretty bad and he got injured. And then his junior year, which was just last season, he went off. And I was super big on Dalvin Cook last season and it paid off. Now Darius Geis, I am a little concerned about for sure, but he's a sixth round pick and there's no one who is not risky as a sixth round pick really, except for JK Dobbins, to be honest, he's very, very safe. But looking at my running backs, I mean, we have Kamara, Eckler and Carson. Those are three like phenomenal running backs. I don't need to find an absolute safe, super, super safe running back who I can be sure of that he can start in my flex. I don't really need that. I just want someone who could be trade value or could even possibly beat out someone like Chris Carson or Austin Eckler in my roster. And that is Darius Geis. I also talked about him on my Twitter. So go follow me there because you guys are missing out on a lot of content if you're not following me over there. Then Evan Ingram goes, followed by Deshaun Watson, Edelman, Hollywood Brown, Juice Landry, Jordan Howard, Breeze, Brady, Brandon Cooks, and AJ Green. So J.K. Dobbins fell to me. This is very, very interesting. I may have to take him. Wide receiver, Michael Gallup and Devontae Parker. I like both of them. And I like them both a good amount more than even Tyler Boyd and CeeDee Lamb, who I like. But Marvin Jones, I like a lot for sure. So quick look at tight end. Still Gronk, top guy there. I'm not going to take him. I mean, at running back... J.K. Dobbins and Ronald Jones and James White are the last two guys who I, and Matt Breda, are the last two guys who I would really like having any sort of thought of starting them at my flex for a week or two. At wide receiver, yes, I like Parker, I like Gallup, but I still do like guys later on in the draft like CeeDee Lamb, especially Marvin Jones, who there's probably like a 75% chance that one of these guys falls to me with my next pick. So in a real draft, I probably still would take Michael Gallup here. But I did say that we were going to go almost wide receiver zero. So I'm going to stick to that. And since I didn't do quite a wide receiver zero strategy, I'm going to make up for it by now still taking a lot of running backs and not loading up on wide receivers until really the eighth round. So we are going to take J.K. Dobbins here. He's very safe because even if Mark Ingram doesn't go down, Dobbins should play some third downs and he should be getting about 10 to 12 carries a game. And if Mark Ingram were to go down, Dobbins would be a borderline RB1. Then Sonny Michelle goes, followed by Devontae Parker, Gronk, Debo Samuel, Keyshawn Vaughn, James White, Michael Gallup, Tyler Higby. Deontay Johnson, Matt Ryan, Ronald Jones, and Tyler Boyd. So, running backs, 
Besides Matt Breida, no one I really like. And Alexander Madison, I guess. He's just very risky, though. But we took a lot of running backs, so now it is time to take a wide receiver. And CeeDee Lamb and Marvin Jones are both there. If I take CeeDee Lamb, there's a chance that Marvin Jones falls to me. But honestly, it's not worth the risk because I like Marvin Jones so much more. He was so good last season when Matt Stafford was on the field. Seriously, he was incredible. And yes, Kenny Galladay is the wide receiver one on this offense, but Marvin Jones has produced year in and year out with Kenny Galladay on the field. There is no worries in my mind about Marvin Jones, even if Kenny Galladay is there the entire season. So I'm going to take Marvin Jones. I love this pick right here. Then A.A. Ron goes, followed by Matt Breda, Kevin Coleman, Marlon Mack, Tariq Cohen, Alexander Madison to end a five running back in a row run. Darius Slayton, Will Fuller, two tight ends go in a row, Hayden Hurst and Hunter Henry. And CeeDee Lamb is still available. I am very, very, very happy about that. I didn't think he'd be there, but he is. And there's a lot of volume to go around in this Dallas Cowboys offense. Yes, Amari Cooper should get around 120 targets. Yes, Michael Gallup should get 110 to 120 targets. And yes, Jarwin should be at around 100 targets. But remember, Jason Witten is gone. And Mike McCarthy, you know, he likes to pass the ball a lot. He likes to pass more than Jason Garrett, not to mention Randall Cobb is gone too. I believe Witten and Cobb both had exactly 83 targets on the dot. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that is what they both had. So that right there is 166 targets vacated. There is enough targets to go around in this offense, and you can't tell me otherwise. CeeDee Lamb is going to get 80 to 100 targets, and when you're telling me that you can get him in the ninth round, I love that right there. So CeeDee Lamb is mine. I really like that pick. Then we have Stafford, who I am not very concerned about, by the way. His injury shouldn't be that concerning. Most people think that he should be fine and won't re-injure it. Then Josh Allen goes, Zach Moss, Latavius Murray, Carson Wentz, who I'm not saying won't get injured, but a lot of people who have studied these injuries think that he's not necessarily injury prone and he got very unlucky. And I've studied the injuries too, and I believe the same thing. Then Jerry Judy, Philip Lindsay, Carrion Johnson, Emmanuel Sanders, San Fran defense goes in the 10th round. Don't do that, guys. Please don't. Wait until your last two or three picks to draft a defense. McCole Hardman and Jamison Crowder also going to get a lot of targets, just like CeeDee Lamb. So he's a good pick as well. Now I'm going to take a quick look at tight end. Yeah, no one who I really, really, really like. I like Fant, but I can probably wait another round for him. And if he goes, there's no worries. I think Jacecki, Hawkinson, Jarwin, all those guys are good. At wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, Christian Kirk, Jalen Rieger are all okay. Running back, man, there's just, there's really no one. So we have three really good running backs on our starting roster, Darius Geis and J.K. Dobbins. I really like that. And at wide receiver, we have four guys who I like. I want to take a backup tight end, so... I could take Antonio Gibson here because he is sort of, in a way, a handcuff to Darius Geis. At wide receiver, I just don't really see a ton of value, and I'd rather be safe and just take a handcuff. I don't usually take handcuffs, but Antonio Gibson is one of the only handcuffs who you can actually get as a handcuff, like get late into drafts in the 10th, 11th round, who I actually think is valuable as a handcuff. So I'm going to take Antonio Gibson. I haven't taken him a ton in drafts, but I'm going to take him now because why not? So took Antonio Gibson there. Then Tony Pollard, Henderson, Baltimore defense, Buffalo defense, Jared Cook, Henry Ruggs, Justin Jefferson, Christian Kirk, Deshaun Jackson, and Pittsburgh defense. Let's take a quick look at quarterback. And this is usually what happens, to be honest. I'm left with Daniel Jones and Big Ben. So Let's see how many quarterbacks the other teams have, because if they all have backups, then that would be ideal, because then we could wait another round. So it looks like one team right here doesn't have a backup. Then, actually, it looks like three teams don't have a backup. It would be risky to not take either Big Ben or Daniel Jones, 
look, I like Fant. I, I really do. But I can settle with Hawkinson, Jacecki, Goddard, any of those guys. I don't really want to be stuck with Drew Locke. So I'm going to take Big Ben here. If you want to go Daniel Jones, that's completely fine. But I prefer Big Ben because he has produced pretty much every single year that he's been in the league in such an explosive offense. Then Justin Jackson, Noah Fant, Anthony Miller, Chase Edmonds, Boston Scott, Jalen Rieger, Daniel Jones, Joe Burrow, New England defense, Baker Mayfield, Chicago defense, and Sterling Shepard. And see, if I didn't take Big Ben there, then both he and Daniel Jones would be gone. So we need one backup player, and then we need our tight end. So tight end, all these guys are really okay. So maybe, hmm trying to think I could use my backup as a wide receiver depending on who my starting tight end is but actually no you know what my backup or excuse me my last bench spot will be a tight end so at tight end we have Jacecki Hawkinson personally I like Jacecki and Goddard so I'm gonna go Jacecki because if I don't take him he might be taken by my next pick but Goddard should be there so I'll take Jaseki here. I like him. He should possibly be the second target in this offense because Preston Williams tore his ACL in either week eight or week nine. So he's not going to be great this upcoming season. Mike Jaseki could be the second target in this offense. Then we have Michael Pittman, Preston Williams. Speaking of Preston Williams, there he goes. Duke Johnson, Drew Locke, Anthony McFarland, John Brown, Austin Hooper, Brandon Ayuk, Minnesota defense, Justin Tucker. So, like I said, Goddard should be there, and he is there. I love him because as a backup tight end, he has a solid weekly floor because he's on the Eagles, who loves to run two tight end sets, and he is getting 8 to 12 fantasy points pretty much every week. But if Ertz goes down, then Goddard is a top three tight end. So, I'll take Goddard. Very, very happy with that draft pick right there. Tampa Bay defense goes, followed by Jack Doyle, Naheem Hines, Blake Jarwin, LA Chargers defense, Harrison Butker, TJ Hawkinson. We have a lot of kickers going in a row with Greg Zerline, Will Lutz, Young Hoku, Robbie Gould, and Zane Gonzalez. Let me know in the comments below if you're still watching this video, when did you find out that Will Lutz was spelled W-I-L? Or maybe you never knew that until now. So if you didn't know until now, let me know because that'd be really cool. But otherwise, let me know roughly when you realized that Will Lutz used only one L in the name Will because I think I learned two seasons ago, like towards the end of the season. I don't know how I figured it out, but yeah, let me know guys. I'm curious because I know there's still a lot of people who don't even know and it makes sense because no one really spells the name Will with only one L. But anyway, back to taking our kicker in defense. Defenses are easier to predict than kickers, so I like taking my kicker first the Seahawks defense is okay and the Titans defense is okay but I prefer the Titans because I think they have a better defense on paper and because they play a slower offense than the Seahawks so there should be less scoring on the opposing team when it comes to the Titans defense so we'll take the Titans defense there then we see Cam Newton go followed by Jake Elliott, Matt Prater, Fairbath, Seahawks defense, Dan Bailey, AJ Dillon, Ryan Tannehill, Nikhil Harry, who I like, by the way. I think Nikhil Harry is a very, very good pick. Rashad Perriman. And speaking of Nikhil Harry, I just talked about him on Twitter also today. Well, actually, for you guys yesterday, because I'm recording this today from my perspective and going to edit it and then finish editing the next day. So yesterday, I should say, for you guys, I talked about Nikhil Harry on Twitter. So please, guys, go follow me there if you don't want to miss out on this awesome content every single day. But back to our kicker, you can honestly take anyone here. Like, I can't really blame you, no matter who you take. But, I mean, I think that Matt Gay is probably the best guy here, just because Tampa Bay is going to be a fast-paced offense. They already were, and now they're definitely going to be fast-paced since they have a quarterback who they can trust in Tom Brady. And Matt Gay has a pretty good leg, so I'll take Matt Gay. Because you know what? If he's not good, then it's fine. I can drop him week two, week three, whatever. Sammy Watkins, Darrington Evans, Golden Tate, Jimmy G, Johnny Smith, and Miami Dolphins defense. Quick last look at our roster. Big Ben, starting quarterback. 
I feel like this happens every single time, and same with Alvin Kamara. So, Big Ben, he's fine. He'll get the job done. Kamara, one of the best running backs in the league, especially in PPR scoring. Austin Eckler as my RB2. He has the floor of a mid RB2 and the upside of being a top three running back. And I'll take that all day, any day out of my RB2. Robert Woods, he has such a strong floor. His ceiling isn't tremendous. It's not like a top five, eight wide receiver, but he is not going to finish outside of the top 24 wide receivers. And same with Terry McLaurin, but he actually might even have the potential to finish as a wide receiver one. I think it could really happen. Jaseki, he's great. He is very talented and in a situation where there's not much competition and he should be getting a lot of targets. Chris Carson as my RB3 in my flex. I think that's great. He's on a good team who knows how to use him. He's very talented and the only two concerns are fumbling and injuries. Darius Geis, only concern there is injuries. It is a pretty big concern, but we got him in the sixth round. There's not many people in the sixth round who are safe. One guy in the sixth round who is safe is J.K. Dobbins. He doesn't have as much upside as Darius Geis, but still a lot of potential for sure. Then Marvin Jones, love him, think he should finish as a wide receiver too, as long as he stays healthy and as long as Matt Stafford stays healthy. CeeDee Lamb, he might not finish as a wide receiver three, but I think that he definitely could finish as a wide receiver three. And if Amari Cooper or Michael Gallup go down, C.D. Lamb is definitely a wide receiver too. Then Antonio Gibson, partially just a handcuff to Darius Geis, but also he could even be start worthy alone, even with even with Darius Geis playing, but he's more so a handcuff. And then Dallas Goddard as our last player on this roster. He's just a backup, but who could also possibly outscore Mike Jacecki, and honestly, I think there's probably a 50-50 chance that Jacecki outscores Goddard or Goddard outscores Jacecki, so that's really a toss-up there. And then obviously, Seahawks, or excuse me, Titans defense and Matt Gay, they get the job done, but they're kickers and defenses, so they don't really matter. So what do I grade this team? I believe I've given, since I started doing the grading system, which I think has been the last two videos, I think I've given my teams an A- minus and a B+. Plus. I am going to give this team an A- minus and a half. It's pretty close to being an A, but not quite going to give it that A, just because I would have liked if my wide receiver one could have been Calvin Ridley or DJ Moore. But still, Robert Woods as my wide receiver one is not the end of the world. This team is an A- minus and a half in my book. like this team a lot. Definitely a contending team. And if Terry McLaurin becomes a top 10, top 12 wide receiver, then I think this team is probably an A plus even. So yeah, like this team. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed and are still watching, please hit that like button because it helps me out a ton. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button because I put out almost daily content, usually six videos a week. I try to put out seven a week, but it doesn't always happen. But yeah, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't already, hit that like button because it certainly does help. And I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time. Peace.